This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. I just find amazing that Jesus wasn't really crucified. It wasn't Jesus that was crucified. It was somebody else that was crucified. And then it was Jesus pretending you know, to, to rise from the dead. Listen, there are all kinds of people who are going to come up with theories to try to explain this away. It takes a whole lot more faith to believe that than it does to believe what actually happened. The fact is that the resurrection is a fact. The reality of the resurrection is that it actually happened. Professor Thomas Arnold, who was the author of the famous history of Rome, he was appointed to the chair of uh, modern history at Oxford. He was well acquainted with the evidence, and particularly in relation to historical issues. He was a great scholar, and this is what he said. I have been used for many years to study the histories of other times and to examine and weigh the evidence of those who have been written about them. And I know of no one fact in the history of mankind which is proved by better and fuller evidence of every sort than the great sign which God hath given us that Christ died and rose again from the dead. Chair of History at Oxford. Brooke Foss Westcott, who is an English scholar and an author, wrote this. Raking all the evidence together, it is not too much to say that there is no historic incident better or more variously supported than the resurrection of Christ. But that's not enough proof. That's not enough evidence. Here is the real proof. Here is the real evidence. What about the evidence of those early Christians that were there when it happened? What caused them to go everywhere telling the message of, the, of this risen Christ? What happened in their lives? What happened in the lives of some disciples who were crowded into a room, hiding, desperately fearful for their own lives, knowing that they were about to be massacred because they had been followers of Christ, expecting any moment for Roman soldiers to come and knock on the door and take them away and put them in prison or kill them, knowing that their lives were in incredible danger? What happened in their lives that just a few days later, they are on the streets of Jerusalem proclaiming a risen Christ? The book of Acts, which is the history of the very early church, begins with right, right after the resurrection of Christ. And in the very beginning of, of Acts, we even see this encounter with Christ. And it was the immediate birth of the church, just a matter of days after that, that the church began to function. And I want you to see some passages in the very first year, if you will, of, of what happened with the early church. These are the disciples who had been hiding for their lives, afraid that they were about to be murdered, on the streets of Jerusalem saying this, Acts 2, 24, but God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. These were the disciples proclaiming this in the street to the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin and the Roman authorities and all the people in the marketplace. Acts 2.32, God has raised this Jesus to life and we are all witnesses of the fact. Acts 2.36, therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Acts 3.15, you killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. Acts 3.26, when God raised up his servant and sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. And then referring to a man that had been healed, there was a, a, a cripple that had been healed. Acts 4.10, then know this, and all people of Israel... It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Acts 5.20, the God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. Tree was just another word that they used for cross. Acts 10, 39 and 40, we are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead and on the third day and caused him to be seen. Acts 13, verses 29 and 30, when they had carried out all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb, but God raised him from the dead. <laughs> Something happened to those disciples and those early believers that changed their lives and changed the world. There were no theories. They knew what had happened. 
It changed their lives. And I will say to you that this is the central issue for Christians today. Do you or do you not believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Had there been any visible benefits for their efforts, you know, for the disciples and the early Christians, if there had been any benefits for them, then we might question it. Things like prestige and wealth and power and all of those things. That would explain their actions. But those early Christians were beaten, stoned to death, thrown to the lions, tortured and crucified. Every conceivable method was used to get them to stop talking. Yet they laid down their lives as the ultimate proof of their complete confidence in the truth of their message. A man will die for what he believes in, but a man will not die for something that he knows is a lie. They knew it was truth, and they were willing to lay down their lives for it because their lives had been changed, transformed by a risen Lord. So the question must be asked, questions must be asked, how do you evaluate this historical evidence? Looking for a Bible study that's focused on the practical application of the Bible? Check out our website at theopenclass.com.